Modern travel companies offer their clients trips to almost any corner of the world. However, there are forbidden zones on our planet where access is restricted. In this video, I will tell you about the places you definitely will never be able to visit. Enjoy watching. The history of the border between Russia and Finland began in 1595 when a peace agreement was signed between the Kingdom of Sweden and the Moscow Sardom. At that time, it extended to the Barents Sea and divided Lapland into Swedish and Muscovite parts. After the proclamation of Finland's independence in 1917, the border was reinforced and closed. Thirty years later, the modern lines of the border, running from the Gulf of Finland to the Russian border with Norway, were confirmed by the Paris Peace Treaty. Currently, the total length of the border zone is 1,340 kilometers. This area is patrolled by the border services of both countries. Special permission is required to enter this zone. The border could only be crossed at official checkpoints. However, since 2015, Finland has gradually started to tighten control over entry into the country. In 2015, the authorities blocked access to border crossing for people on bicycles. Then, in 2016, Finnish Foreign Minister Timo Sowini accused Russia of organizing the flow of migrants into the country. In 2023, Finland began the construction of a border barrier. After the deterioration of relations between the two countries, all checkpoints were closed, except for Raja Giuseppe. Preliminary information suggests that the remaining border crossing points will be opened in April 2024. On March 11, 2011, at 1446 local time, Japan experienced the strongest earthquake in its history, resulting in a powerful tsunami. The wave heights reached 35 meters, and the survival boundary was 20 minutes, meaning people had only 20 minutes to find shelter and save themselves. Forty minutes after the earthquake began, the tsunami struck the Fukushima 1 nuclear power plant located in the town of Okuma. Tons of water destroyed the power supply and cooling systems, after which the nuclear fuel in three of the six reactors overheated. It was impossible to stop the overheating, and after some time, several explosions occurred. A huge cloud of radioactive smoke formed over the nuclear power plant. The Japanese authorities decided to urgently evacuate people from nearby settlements and create an exclusion zone covering 1,150 square kilometers. The aftermath of the accident began to be addressed as soon as the natural disaster calmed down. However, due to the danger of being in this zone, the work is being carried out gradually and is expected to take 40 years. Now, the exclusion zone is completely uninhabited. Abandoned cars, products on store shelves, and personal belongings of local residents remind us that people once lived here. Entry is strictly prohibited. However, daredevils from different countries still illegally penetrate this area. For example, in 2015, just four years after the disaster, the exclusion zone was visited by Polish photographer Arkadiusz Podnieszynski. According to him, this trip provided an opportunity opportunity to draw personal conclusions about what happened after the tragedy. The Mayak Production Association is located in the Russian city of Ozersk, in the Chelyabinsk region. The facility was built in 1948 and was intended for the production of nuclear weapon components. On September 29, 1957, a major accident occurred at the Mayak chemical plant. According to official information, at 1622 local time, there was an explosion of a tank containing about 80 tons of explosive waste. However, what actually happened remains unknown, as no independent investigation was conducted. As a result of this accident, at least 20 million curies of radioactive substances were released into the environment, which is twice as much as after the explosion in Hiroshima. Part of the emissions formed a cloud, from which radioactive fallout occurred over the next 12 hours. Thus, at least 217 populated areas, with a total population of over 200,000 people, were affected by the contamination zone. Hundreds of thousands of people were involved in mitigating the aftermath of the accident. Most of them were military personnel, but there were not enough of them. So ordinary residents of nearby settlements, who were unaware that they would be in a radioactive zone, were also recruited. To prevent the contaminated territory's dangerous impact on the environment, the government decided to create a sanitary protection zone covering an area of 700 square kilometers. It is prohibited to be in this area without special permission. Since 1968, this land has been named the East Ural Nature Reserve. For a long time, any information 
information about the disaster was classified, even though it was only surpassed in danger by the Chernobyl and Fukushima 1 nuclear accidents. The fact of the explosion was only confirmed by Soviet authorities in 1989. As a result of the accident at the Mayak chemical plant, at least 80,000 people were affected. People died, acquired serious diseases, and gave birth to unhealthy children. Undoubtedly, if the authorities had not concealed information about the accident, there would have been far fewer victims. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant accident caused serious radioactive contamination of the environment not only in Ukraine. Belarus was also among the countries affected by the man-made disaster. Radiation fallout affected three districts of the Gomel region. In this area, in 1988, the world's only radio-ecological reserve was established. It covers an area of 2,162 square kilometers. The reserve encompasses 96 abandoned settlements. Before the accident, more than 20,000 people lived there. All of them were evacuated to safe areas of the region. Over time, in the absence of humans, the reserve has become an ideal habitat for many animals, birds, and plants. Currently, 1,251 plant species, 54 mammal species, 25 fish species, and 280 bird species have been registered in this area. Some of them are rare and endangered, but living in the reserve positively affects the population of such species. For example, in 2016, 16 bison were brought to the Polesi Reserve. Over 25 years, the population has increased to 160 individuals. The creation of the Polesi Reserve aimed not only to protect the country's population from radiation, but also to research the impact of radionuclides on the surrounding nature. For this purpose, an experimental base was built within the reserve, including a livestock farm, fruit orchards, and an apiary. Now several car routes have been organized for tourists. All of them pass through safe areas where the radiation radiation level has decreased to normal limits. The main part of the reserve remains contaminated, so entry to this area is available only to staff and scientists. On July 27, 1953, after three years of war, North and South Korea signed an armistice agreement. As a result, the Demilitarized Zone DMZ, was established. This territory divides the Korean peninsula into two nearly equal parts and serves as a symbol of the ceasefire. The DMZ stretches for 248 kilometers, with a width of 2 kilometers, and an area of over 900 square kilometers. Both sides of the territory are monitored by observation posts and armed soldiers. Parts of this area are mined. From the South Korean side, the DMZ is surrounded by mountains, forests, rivers, and valleys. There are also populated areas nearby. Local residents engage in agriculture and receive certain benefits for living close to the DMZ. In turn, North Korea attempts propaganda to lure South Korean residents to their country. For this purpose, a large village with beautiful houses and parks was built. Music speakers were installed on the streets of this settlement, broadcasting songs praising the country. However, South Koreans quickly realized that the settlement was uninhabited and served as a kind of propaganda facade. The DMZ is a popular tourist attraction. In South Korea, you can buy a tour that covers the entire length of the zone. Of course, you cannot enter the territory itself, but from any South Korean point, you can easily see what is happening at the border. Since the DMZ is almost entirely uninhabited, it has turned into a nature reserve with rich flora and fauna. Ecologists have identified about 2,900 plant species, 70 mammal species, and 320 bird species. The territory is home to very rare animals, such as the Asiatic black bear, Korean fox, and Amur tiger. As the two countries currently live in peace, scientists fear that one day the DMZ will be destroyed, along with its entire forest ecosystem. The accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, located in the Ukrainian city of Pripyat, became one of the largest man-made disasters in the world. Gradually, radioactivity in this area is decreasing, but to this day, the exclusion zone remains uninhabitable. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant accident occurred on April 26, 1986. That day, the reactor of the fourth power unit was destroyed. 
As a result of the incident, about 50 million curies were released into the environment, exceeding the Hiroshima contamination levels by 400 times. The main long-lived radionuclides became a merichium, 241, with a half-life of about 432 years, and plutonium, 239, with a half-life of over 24,000 years. Radioactive contamination spread over a large area, so the surrounding territory was divided into three zones. The special zone, at the accident site, the 10-kilometer and the 30-kilometer zones. Residents of settlements located within a 30-kilometer radius of the nuclear power plant were evacuated. However, radiation spread much further, and its levels significantly exceeded the norm. For this reason, from 1990, the resettlement of other populated areas began, after which this territory was also included in the security perimeter. Today, the forests and swamps near the nuclear power plant remain the most contaminated. The site of the accident has long been cleaned and closed with a so-called sarcophagus. Therefore, in 2002, some places in the exclusion zone were opened for visitation. This place has become incredibly popular among tourists from many countries around the world. The term Zone Rouge is used to denote a region near the Meuse River in northeastern France, which became uninhabitable after World War I. The total area of this territory is at least 1,200 square kilometers. Before the war, these lands were inhabited. There were small villages and agricultural lands. Semi-ruined houses still remind us of life in this area. In 1916, the Battle of Verdun ignited in northeastern France, lasting for 10 months. This battle is now known as one of the largest and bloodiest military military operations in the history of World War I. Endless shelling and explosions altered this territory beyond recognition. Green meadows and groves turned into barren, scorched earth with trenches and craters, and the local residents, who found themselves in the epicenter of the war, had to flee. Even before the war began, German and French soldiers hid a massive amount of ammunition near the Meuse River. So even now, the Zone Rouge contains many unexploded ordinances. Moreover, soldiers at that time used combat poison substances, which are now banned. As a result, the land was poisoned with lead, mercury, chlorine, and arsenic. Undoubtedly, the authorities realized that this area had become uninhabitable, so they bought up the entire contaminated section. Its area accounted for almost 7% of the total area of France. Currently, the territory of the Zone Rouge is fenced off. It is strictly prohibited to be there, as it is very dangerous. According to the most optimistic forecasts, this land will finally become habitable habitable only in 700 years. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are located in the southeastern part of the Bay of Bengal in the Indian Ocean. They comprise 570 islands, covering an area of more than 8,000 square kilometers. Among all these islands, no more than 40 are inhabited. The majority of the population consists of people from South and Southeast Asia. However, some islands are home to various tribes that reject contact with civilization. The indigenous people are gradually dying out, taking with them the ancient culture of their people. About 90% of the island's territory is covered by tropical forests. The flora and fauna of this region are unique. The forests contain more than 3,000 species of trees, 150 species of ferns, and at least 100 species of orchids. The wildlife is equally diverse. More than 200 species of mammals live in this area, some of which are endemic to the islands. The coastal coral reefs are home to countless different marine inhabitants. The Nicobar Islands are completely closed to visitors, while the Andaman Islands welcome welcome tourists to enjoy their pristine beaches, untouched jungles, and mangrove forests. However, even in Port Blair, the capital of Andaman, the service leaves much to be desired. There are no luxury hotels or expensive restaurants in this city, but for some travelers, being one with nature in its pristine form is far more important than comfort. Since the 16th century, Hong Kong Island has served as a major trading port. In the 19th century, the British began importing opium into its territory. This displeased Emperor Minning of the Qing Dynasty, who banned this trade. This decision led to the outbreak of the First Opium War. In 1842, the Chinese lost the war, and the dynasty had to sign the Treaty of Nanking. According to this document, Hong Kong Island became a British colony. For the British Empire, Hong Kong played a very important role. It facilitated 
facilitated the opium trade and became a foothold for further conquest of the region. Thus, Hong Kong became the third largest port for Britain after London and Liverpool. Gradually, foreigners began to arrive in Hong Kong. The island started to be developed with European architecture. In 1898, Britain leased the larger part of Hong Kong, known as the New Territories, for 99 years. Since then, the flow of migrants has not ceased. To address this issue in 1951, the Hong Kong authorities created a closed border zone, totaling 30 kilometers on land and 733 kilometers on water. The land area is fenced around the perimeter and patrolled by the police. There are several controlled points for crossing this border, where police check documents and inquire about the purpose of visiting Hong Kong. This decision significantly reduced the influx of illegal migrants. The Diomede Islands consist of two islands and several rocks in the center of the Bering Strait, at a distance of about 35 kilometers from Chukotka and Alaska. The larger island is known as Ratmanov Island, or Big Diomede, or Imaklik. Its territory belongs to Russia. The second island is under the jurisdiction of the USA and is called Krusenstern Island or Little Diomede, or Ingalik. These two territories are located four kilometers apart from each other. Originally, the islands belonged to the Russian Empire, but after the sale of Alaska in 1867, they were divided between the two countries and are used to this day as a border between Russia and the USA. In 1948, Soviet authorities established a military base on Big Diomede. After that, the indigenous inhabitants of the island were relocated to the mainland part of the country. Currently, Big Diomede has no permanent population. It hosts a border service base of the Federal Security Service of the Russian Federation and a weather station. Access to the island is restricted. Unlike Big Diomede, Little Diomede is inhabited and open for visitation. It is populated by the indigenous people of the islands, the Inupiat. According to the population census in 2021, 82 people lived on Little Diomede. Interestingly, despite the small distance between the two islands, the time difference is almost a day. This is because the two territories are divided by the international date line. For this reason, Big Diomede is sometimes called the Island of Tomorrow and Little Diomede the Island of Yesterday. Thus, if both islands were open for visitation, they would be highly popular among tourists. After all, where else can you literally travel in time and celebrate New Year's twice in one day? Surtsey Island is located in the Atlantic Ocean within the territory of Iceland. It is recognized as one of the youngest islands on our planet and is included in the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Surtsey emerged on November 14, 1963 as a result of an eruption of the underwater volcano Vestmanejar. Over the next four years, there were at least 100 more volcanic eruptions, after which the island's area increased to 2.7 square kilometers. Over time, the area of Surtsey nearly halved due to erosion and soil being washed away by waves. Currently, the island's area is 1.4 square kilometers. When the news of the formation of a new island reached scientists, they decided to conduct extensive research on its territory. Their goal was to observe the emergence of life. For this purpose, a scientific base was created, and entry to the island was closed to everyone except scientists. This decision allowed for the observation of the birth of life without human interference. Initially, there were no forms of life on the island, but microorganisms began to inhabit it within the first hours. By 1965, the first vegetation appeared on the island, mosses and lichens. By 2008, Surtsey boasted 69 different plant species. Scientists believe that the enrichment of the flora occurred thanks to birds, whose droppings contain various seeds. The first feathered inhabitants of Surtsey were petrels and puffins, and later auks joined them. Ten years after the island's birth, its territory became home to 335 species of invertebrates. Thanks to the emergence of Surtsey, scientists were able to determine that it takes about a decade to form such a diverse landscape with a complex ecosystem, although it was previously thought that it took at least a hundred years. The island of Montserrat is located in the Caribbean Sea and is part of the British Overseas Territory. Previously, its population was 13,000 people, but in 1995, a natural disaster occurred, resulting in the destruction of Montserrat's administrative center, the city of Plymouth. The island is of volcanic origin, with the Soufriere Hills volcano located on its territory. After 400 years of dormancy, the volcano reawakened on July 18, 1995, and has since continued to erupt periodically. When 
the eruption began, lava and ash moved towards Plymouth, putting people in danger. Therefore, the authorities decided to evacuate the residents of all settlements within the risk zone. About 8,000 people left Montserrat at that time. A few months later, the authorities allowed people to return to the island. However, in 1997, another severe eruption occurred, resulting in 19 deaths. After this disaster, a decision was made to create an exclusion zone in the southern part of the island. Visiting this area is prohibited due to the volcano's constant activity. Yet the danger does not deter tourists, and many still visit the island. Abandoned luxury villas and administrative buildings, buried up to their roofs in solidified lava and ash, create a unique landscape. Today, Plymouth looks like modern Pompeii, attracting people from all over the world. Regular eruptions only affect the southern part of Montserrat, so people still live on the other side of the island. Currently, its population is just over 4,000 people. Cyprus is a well-known sunny resort on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, offering tourists a peaceful and comfortable vacation. However, in the second half of the 20th century, the island experienced regular unrest between warring nations. For this reason, in 1974, the UN decided to establish a buffer zone, also known as the Green Line. The Green Line is a demarcation line that divides the island into two parts. The southern part is predominantly inhabited by Greeks, while the northern part is inhabited by Turks. Turks. The length of the buffer zone is 180 kilometers, and its width varies from 20 meters to 7 kilometers. The barrier also passes through Nicosia, the capital of Cyprus, dividing it into two parts. The territory of the demilitarized zone is marked by fences with barbed wire and warning signs. Within the Green Line, there are settlements with a total population of about 10,000 people. These people live ordinary lives, mostly working on farms. Despite the fierce conflicts over the island's territory, and the creation of the border, both Turks and Greeks live in the village of Pyla without any disturbances. The majority of the buffer zone's territory remains untouched by humans. As a result, this area is rich in biodiversity. It is inhabited by both fairly common species of animals and birds, as well as endangered ones. The Cypress Forestry Department notes that the population of some species has significantly increased after the creation of the buffer zone. Thus, this decision helped not only to resolve the conflict issue, but also also to protect the flora and fauna from human activity. The city of Ceuta, located on the northern coast of Africa, is a Spanish semi-exclave. For a long time, this region has been contested by Morocco, but Spanish authorities still consider Ceuta to be their territory. In the early 1990s, the city faced an influx of illegal migrants from Africa. Disorder became more frequent on the streets, and the Spanish authorities decided to take control of the situation. For this purpose, in 1993, a network of border structures separating Ceuta from Morocco was constructed. Initially, the Moroccan government expressed its dissatisfaction, as they do not recognize Spain's sovereignty over this territory. However, this led to nothing, and the construction of the Ceuta Wall was successfully completed. The first fence, built in 1993, was 8.5 kilometers long and 2.5 meters high. This height proved to be insufficient, and migrants still managed to enter Ceuta. Therefore, in 1995, the barrier was modified, and its height was increased to 3 meters. In 2005, the height of the fence was again again increased to 6 meters. Now, the Ceuta wall consists of parallel barrier structures, protected with barbed wire and equipped with motion and noise sensors, as well as video cameras. In case of an attempt to cross the border, the police are immediately dispatched to the site. There have been seven incidents related to the Ceuta wall, in which migrants tried en masse to enter European territory. The latest breach occurred on November 17, 2023, when about 1,000 migrants organized an attempt to cross the border, but all were were stopped by Moroccan police. Kuwait is known for its complex history, having been subject to invasions and territorial capture attempts over a long period. In 1961, Kuwait became independent. Its vast oil reserves turned it into one of the wealthiest countries in the world. However, the uneasy relations with Iraq and Saudi Arabia did not allow the local residents and the rulers of the emirate to live in peace. In the same year, Iraq's minister Abdel Qasem attempted to annex Kuwait, claiming it was an integral part of Iraq. War was averted thanks to the assistance of British 
British soldiers. In the 1970s, Saudi Arabia and Iraq again laid claim to Kuwait's disputed territories. But the most intense invasion occurred on August 2, 1990. On that day, Saddam Hussein occupied the emirate, establishing his own government. This government expressed the desire to join Iraq. And on August 28, Kuwait was declared a province of Iraq. This incident led to disruptions in oil supplies. The USA decided to intervene in the conflict, marking the start of the Gulf War, which ended on February 28, 1991, with Kuwait regaining its independence. After the occupation of Kuwait, the UN approved the construction of a barrier between the two warring states. This decision helped to protect Kuwait from further invasions by Iraq. The border barrier was made of electrified fencing and barbed wire. It was surrounded by a trench about 4.5 meters deep and guarded by soldiers and patrol helicopters. The total length of the barrier was 190 kilometers. In 2004, its length was extended to 217 kilometers. The border barrier indeed helped prevent invasions into the country, and after the fall of Saddam Hussein's regime, Iraq and Kuwait have not engaged in conflicts. And that's all from me. If you liked this video, don't forget to rate it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.